I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. Today I'm going to show you how to find the location of a broken wire without x-ray vision. Subscribe to my channel because my invention is the best. I bet you have never ever seen anything like this before. A lot of the time, you suspect an electric wire is broken, but would like to confirm where it actually broke. Other times, you simply want to locate wires placed behind a wall. Without any expensive tools, I will show you how to use two cell phones to do this. I will install a Wi-Fi detection app on the first cell phone. There are many of them. The one I use is called Wi-Fi Analyzer. Run the app, then select the signal history. You will see all the available Wi-Fi signals. See, there are many of them in my house. On the second cell phone, I install an app to create a Wi-Fi hotspot. Since I don't have a data plan on this phone, I use an app called NetShare to broadcast Wi-Fi hotspot SSID host names. As soon as the second phone starts the Wi-Fi hotspot, the first phone will pick up the signal. See, on the top, 20 negative dBm for Wi-Fi signal strength is in a logarithmic scale, so 20 negative dBm is stronger than 30 negative dBm. I put this cell phone into this snack bag. Since the bag is made of aluminum, it is a pretty good shield from the Wi-Fi signals. See, the Wi-Fi hotspot signal drops if you close the bag well. And if I plug in a headphone with the wire exposed, I can detect certain Wi-Fi signals. However, the signal for this phone from the audio jack is weak. To obtain a stronger signal, I need to find the Wi-Fi antenna. I open the back cover of this second cell phone since it is an old cell phone that I don't care about. I take out the battery and remove a few screws. Pry between the front cover and rear frame all the way around the phone until the rear frame comes loose. Remove the rear frame. There are two contacts for the Wi-Fi. You can use a multimeter to test. One contact is connected to the ground. The second contact is your Wi-Fi antenna. I solder a wire to this antenna contact. I use a few rubber bands to hold the battery so that I don't have to close the rear frame. If you have to close the rear frame for your phone, you can put the wire through the headphone jack so that you can close the rear cover. I soldered an alligator clip to the wire so that it is easy to switch different wires to test. This is one cable with yellow, black, and green wires. Now, cut only the yellow wire, and let's see if we can use our cell phone to find the broken spot. Connect the yellow wire to the Wi-Fi antenna. Put the cell phone in the shield bag Seal it well. We use the cell phone with Wi-Fi analyzer running to check the Wi-Fi signal strength emitted from the antenna yellow wire. You need to move really slowly to have a stable average reading. As you move across the broken spot, the reading jumped from strong to weaker. This is my ingenious way to see the wire without x-ray vision. I repeat the test connecting the black wire. Since the black wire is not broken, there is no abrupt change at this location. The abrupt change is an important sign because there is a natural attenuation as you move along the wire. The signal will normally become weaker as you move further away from the source. However, an abrupt change is likely to indicate a cut. A couple of suggestions for choosing the apps. For the Wi-Fi signal detection app, I use Wi-Fi Analyzer since it has a signal history option. You can use other apps, but keep in mind that a history display makes it a little easier. For the Wi-Fi hotspot app, I use NetShare app, since I don't have a data plan on that phone. You can use any other file sharing or Wi-Fi hotspot app as long as it will broadcast Wi-Fi hotspot SSID host names. Let's see if we can see the power cable behind the walls of a house. We will also experiment with a router 
to see if it can provide the Wi-Fi signal. I first removed the sleeve of the antenna, then removed the insulation to expose the tiny antenna wire. Since the white ground wire may be wired at an unexpected place, we connect the hot black wire to the antenna. We put the wire through this drywall to simulate a real wall. The wire is horizontally placed under this drywall. We used an Amazon food delivery bag to shield the router. The router itself needs to be powered by AC with wires. Since these wires can't be shielded, there is some Wi-Fi signal leakage. But since we focus on signal change, we can ignore such leaks. I place the cell phone Wi-Fi monitor along the radial direction first. Then I move radially from closer to the source to further away. By observing the signal strength, I can guess where the wire is. Even though the detection granularity is pretty coarse, it can still be useful. For example, if I want to cut the drywall, I want to know which quadrant to avoid so that the wires are not damaged. If you have only one device connected to a TS plug, one wire connects to the tip, one wire connects to the sleeve. You just need to be aware that the device's load also acts as wire. But if you have a TRS plug connecting to a pair of stereo headphones, or a TRRS type plug connecting to headphones as well as a mic, then you may have difficulty in detecting the broken spot. In stereo earbuds with a TRS, the tip connects to the left earphone, the ring connects to the right earphone, and the sleeve connects to the ground. Very often the left and right earphones both have ground wires and both ground wires are connected to a single terminal sleeve. I want to show you two different kinds of cables. The first, wires can be separated. Stereo earbuds usually have one cable to each earbud, each with two wires inside, one of which is a grounding wire. You should test the non-grounding wires first. If the non-grounding wires are not at fault, then you can separate them. If you tuck one cable of two wires inside the shield bag, Testing is the same as for just two wires. Two, wires cannot be separated at the base. This type of cable, however, cannot be separated. Then you may be out of luck. You may detect only two out of four wires. If only one of the two ground wires is broken, then the broken ground wire is undetectable because the two ground wires are soldered together at the sleeve. For any suspected broken wire location, you should connect the wires one by one to the antenna to see which wire may be at fault. Regardless of whether you are able to separate the wires, since the wires are still connected to the loads, such as the earbuds, you may have some unexpected test results. This diagram will show you the continuity of the wires. If there is no broken wire, then connecting any contacts at the plug will result in all wires and devices emitting a Wi-Fi signal. So this diagram will help you to develop a testing strategy, such as the test sequence, which part to shield or expose, and help you to predict the result. Next, some examples of simple repairs for earbuds. For more detail on more challenging repairs for earbuds, please, please watch my other video. Depending on the location of the broken wire, you may have different ways to fix it. There are three examples, broken at the earbud, at the middle, or near the plug. Regardless of the location, you always need to fasten the wire with a strong, secure mechanism because merely soldering the metal wire is not strong enough. If it is near the earbud, you should fasten the wire on the bud. However, this may not be very secure, so instead you may need to take off the earbud cover. Often you can pry the earbud cover off like this. If you can't pry it off, you may just use pliers to tear it like this. An alternative way is to use a soldering iron to heat and remove the plastic cover. Then put the wires through the hole and tie a knot so that the wire cannot be pulled back. Then solder the wire to the contacts on the small circuit board. Afterwards, use a glue gun to seal the opening. If the broken location is at the middle, you need to make a knot with two wires and solder and wrap with tape. 
If the broken location is at the plug, you need to cut some plastic of the plug to expose wires so that you can solder. You will also need to fasten the wire to the plug. Alternatively, you can remove all of the plastic cover so that you can solder the wires to the contacts. You need to use the glue gun to seal after. If your headphones are expensive, it may also be worth it to purchase a new plug. If you are embarrassed to show these weird looking earbuds, you can tell people it came from a Halloween Borg scene. Before you solder the wires, you first need to strip the insulation off. I have different tools and knives, but for this thin cable, I just use my finger to pull the insulation off. One tip I have for dealing with small pieces for soldering is the use of a binder clip. See? I use one binder clip to hold the earbud, one binder clip to hold the wire. This way, you don't have to worry about your unsteady fingers. If you don't have a multimeter to know which channel is not working, the following single audio channel will help to decide if it is the left or the right channel at fault. This is the right channel playing, only the right channel, the left channel is silent. This is the left channel playing. Only the left channel, right channel is silent. I know the earbuds are cheap, but for the sake of the environment, please attempt to fix them instead of throwing them to the landfill. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own Genius Tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the Genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.